We are now going to look at the deduction that you get if you make a donation to a public benefit organization. And this is in terms of section 18A, section 18 capital A. Now, guys, this is the, the, the donations deduction. So first up, important, you must know this. This will always be the last deduction that you do when calculating taxable income. If you put this anywhere else, you will not receive your mark and you will get a negative mark because this is such an important principle and straight from the act. Now what does it mean? This means that when we say gross income less exempt income deductions plus capital gains tax less tax uh, donations to PBO section 18A. Taxable income. Right, always the last deduction. Now, this is if you make a donation to a public benefit organization, you must always get proof, so they must give you a certificate or receipt, some sort of documentation that proves that it has been made to a public benefit organization. Guys, please note that this has nothing to do with the nation's tax at all. Don't go and include the nation's tax here or do something strange like that. That's also negative marking. The nation's tax is a completely separate tax. This is a, if you make a donation to a public benefit organization. Remember, if you make a donation to a public benefit organization, there's no donation's tax on that either. So what is a public benefit organization? Things like a school, university, right, hospice, charities, those type of things. Now how does this donation work or this deduction work? It is limited to 10% of the taxable income. Okay, so let me explain quickly to you what that means. Very simple terms. Right before you do your donations deduction, you will calculate what your taxable income is. So this is now gross income, less exempt income, less all my deductions gives me 100,000 rands, let's say. If my donation is 15,000 rands, you will say it is the actual amount of the donation is 15,000 rands, but that is limited to 10% times whatever that amount is, 100,000 rands, so 10,000 rands. So your the deduction is limited to 10% of that amount. The excess amount, so my donation was 15,000, I could only deduct 10,000. That excess of 5,000 is carried forward to next year and you can claim it as a deduction then by applying the same rule. Okay, now you'll see in the next couple of sections we're going to talk about how different types of donations, how we know what the value is. So I said now in my example here, 15,000 rands is the value of the donation. How do you know what that value is? We're going to look at it. Now guys, I'm just making one comment here. In all of my years of lecturing, the only ones I've ever seen tested is when you make a donation of money or trading stock. They're very simple. There's a lot of other ones in here. I've never seen them test that really. Okay, so. Just bear that in mind, but here we go. So the first one is, how do we know now what the value of the donation is if we donate, in this case, trading stocks? So this is an important one for you. It's very simple. It says, if any deduction is claimed by any taxpayer under the provisions of subsection 1 in respect of any donation of property in kind other than immovable property. So it can't be immovable property. For capital nature, the amount of such a deduction shall be deemed to be an amount equal to they say if it's a financial instrument which is trading stocks, so like a share for example, it's the lower of the fair market value or the amount which has been taken into account for section 228C. Or if it's any other trading stock, so pick and pay gives away some of its cleaning stuff, it is the amount which has been taken into account for section 228C. Okay, now let's quickly talk about that. Section 228C says, And this is a section that you'll study in a lot more detail when you're looking at trading stocks. Section 228C is the, se is the recoupment section. Right. It's a recoupment section 
that applies when you get rid of trading stock. Now, when, usually when you buy a trading stock, we get a deduction for it. Now, if you just give away the trading stock, SARS wants some of its money back, so they recoup you. So basically what this just says, I don't want you to overthink it for now, what it basically just says is, the cost, if you make a donation to a public benefit organization, the cost of the trading stock is what is considered the value of it. Okay, so if you donate trading stock, what do you use for the public benefit organization deduction? Cost. Right, they basically say it's the lower of the cost of the fair market value, and that is just because cost is usually written down in terms of section 22, but guys, take it as cost for now, it is usually, that's what they would want you to say. So it's the lower of cost or market value, but it will always work out to cost, that is what it tends to do in questions. Basically, in section 22, which is your trading stock section, section 22 one is the closing stock section. There they say you must add back the cost of the stock, but if it has been decreased, if the market value is decreased, use the lower amount. And that is what they're trying to say here. Because section 22.8 says, C says, add back whatever you claimed as a deduction. Right. So that's basically the idea behind it. Now, what happens if you donate property which is not immovable property and not trading stock? So this will be, for example, if you donate something like a computer, furniture, vehicles. That you're using. They say we such property is an asset used by the taxpayer. It's the lower of fair market value or cost, less any allowances. So those will be less capital allowances. If it is property which is not trading stock and not used for trade. Now guys, this will not be very common. This will be, for example, if a taxpayer had an asset which it's no longer using in its business and it gets rid of it. Okay. They say it's the lower of the fair market value or the cost less in the case of a movable asset which is deteriorated by reason of use of other causes, a depreciation allowance which has been calculated in terms of section 85 BBI. That's a section that you will also study when you look at recoupment. Basically it is the reducing balance method. It says for every 12 months you must say the cost less 20% depreciation. Remember how the reducing balance method works? Let's say your cost is 100 rands, you'll say less 20%, right, so that's then, oh, sorry, less 20% is 100 times 20%, so that gives us 20, so we are left in with 80. The next year, you say 20 times 80, right, reducing balance, so 16. Right, how do you also calculate this? You can also say 100 times 80% times 80%. And that is the easier way of doing it, and that will also give you 64. So let's say use that method if it's for this type of asset, which is no longer used for business. Again, guys, never ever seen this. Value of property, and this is if it's property that you've manufactured yourself, so this is property which has been purchased, manufactured by or on behalf of the taxpayer for the donation. So you buy property specifically to give to the donation or you make something specifically to give to the donation. Then you must use the fair market value or the cost, whichever is lower. Again, not very common. The next one is if you donate immovable property, so I donate a land, piece of land. It tells you if any deduction is claimed in respect of any donation of immovable property of a capital nature where the lower of market value or municipal value exceeds cost, you must use the following formula. A equals B plus C times D. B is the cost. C is the capital gain that would have been made if you had disposed of it for an amount equal to the lower of the market value or the municipal value. Right? Because remember also, paragraph 38 says that if there's a donation, you must use market value. So it works of that. Remember though, if you usually for CDT purposes, if you make a donation to a PBO, there's no CDT either. Remember that. And then D says it's 60% if it's a natural person or 20% in any other case. Now guys, remember when we looked at capital gains tax, a natural person has an inclusion rate of 40% and a company has an inclusion rate of 80%. So 100 minus 80 is 20, and 100 minus 40 is 60. That's what they're using here. Okay, so you will complete that formula, which is the cost plus 
60 or 20 percent of the capital gain that you would have calculated if you had disposed of it at market value.